Amen. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Let's try that again. Good morning, everybody. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it, for I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Listen, we're going to go ahead and get started with our morning worship service. I'm going to ask that everyone would stand to our feet as we get ready to open up in song. that we get to walk in this thing we call life. Now, God, how I pray that you would be in this place on today. Father, I pray that you let your anointing, your power, your spirit fall fresh on each and every one of us. For God, we need you in such a mighty way. We need you, oh God, to fill our cups. We need you, oh God, to strengthen us. We need you, God, to build us up where we're torn down. God, we need you right now in the name of Jesus. God, we pray right now, Father, that you would look at us. Father, when you find that, that's not pleasing. God, here we are saying, forgive us. But Father, we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. But now, God, how I pray, God, that you would let something be said on today. That we can take it and embed it within our hearts. That we may apply it to everyday living. That our walk with you can be made for better. But most importantly, God, give us something that we can take and share with somebody else. Give us something that allow us to be a walking example of just how you would have us to be. Give us something today, God, that we may understand that the God that we serve is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask for. Now, Father, have thine own way like only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm excited 
about another Sunday, another chance that we get to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I understand. I realize what today is. Uh, last Sunday, we celebrated New Annual Day. We had over 100 people in here. Amen. And today the Cowboys play at home and we may, may take away the hundred part and that's what we're going to have today. But God is still faithful. Amen. Amen. So we're going to see what we can do to get out of here by 11.15. And the kickoff is at 12. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But listen, I don't know about you. Something about praising the name of the Lord. Because God has been good to us. I'm going to say that one more. Something about praising the name of Jesus. Because God has been good to us. Or to make you just want to have church. Make you want to uplift the name of the Lord. Make you want to send praises up. For when praises go up. Blessings come down. So let's have church on today. The choir is coming. They're going to take us even higher and we're going to keep climbing. The song says, Never will a rock cry out in my place. I don't want no rock crying out for me. I don't know about you. See, I just came to magnify. the magnify to join in with us.
rock cry out in my place. He's worthy of all the praise. Yeah, I just came to magnify. I just came to glorify. Listen for our weekly announcements. Uh, we want to uh, keep all those who are known, sick, and shut in in your thoughts and in your prayers. Amen. Um, I've uh, been paying attention. I've been watching. I uh, had an opportunity, I told you, to visit with Mother Barry before she went to the facility. And now I'm watching, uh, paying attention to the great progress that she is making through the rehab. Amen. So y'all keep praying, y'all keep pushing and lifting up her in your thoughts because God is answering. Amen. So we're thankful unto God for what, he, what I get to witness. If you've been paying attention, you get to witness it too to what God is able to do. But we want to keep her lifted as well as Reverend John Barry. Keep him lifted just the same. We're still praying for my sister, Brother Ken, Sister Wisner. Amen. And God continues to allow his hand to move in her life. Also, the Crabtree, the Christopher, the Logan family, y'all keep them lifted uh, right now just the same. Listen, uh, things in this life happen. Some moments are filled with swift transitions. Some moments uh, take a little time. But however, through it all, the best thing that we have is the opportunity to go to God in prayer. Regardless of what it is, we have that chance to go to God in prayer. So just continue to keep one another lifted, uh, especially in times like these. Amen. I don't know about you, but if you pay attention and you watch the news and you see what's transpiring, it may not be in your house, but it's in somebody else's house. But before you know it, times can change and the tide can change and all of a sudden it's knocking at your doorstep. So you just want to make sure that you continue to be in prayer. For whenever the devil tries to rear his ugly head, you can stand boldly and say, listen, I serve a God that's not going to allow this whole evil mess to be victorious in our lives. That's why we pray, because when we call on the name of the Lord, Amen. I'm thankful that we serve a God who's able to answer us in our prayers. Amen. Uh, last Sunday, uh, a lot, again, last Sunday was Youth Annual Day. We had a grand time last Sunday. Amen. Amen. Reverend Darrell McNeely Evans blessed our heart through song, but I'm also excited about what our young people did in their service and ministry throughout the day. Thank y'all so much for what you've done and what you continue to do uh, throughout uh, serving in the youth ministry as well as our leaders. Thank y'all so much. Um, next month is October. Next month we have our uh, Men and Women's Annual Day that is approaching. Uh, our guest will be Mount, uh, uh, Mount Gilead from Italy, Texas, where we just was. They're coming to us like they did last year. Uh, so they tried to show out a little bit and, and try to prepare for us when we came. But I don't think, uh, it's not a competition, but I don't think they got it like we do. Amen. We know how to really put on. So uh, we're going to plan for that on next month. So, amen. All right. She already on it. So we are looking forward to that. So uh, in addition to Men and Women Annual Day, uh, uh, I may be uh, tapping somebody on the shoulder, a couple of people on the shoulder, uh, to help us throughout uh, the Men and Women program. Uh, so don't go to ducking and diving and hide from me uh, if you see me coming your way. Uh, uh, that is man and woman alike, amen. Amen. So I'm looking forward to uh, next month, but we want to start planning now for that. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow at uh, the six o'clock hour, six six thirty, somewhere in there. I know some people have to work, but tomorrow uh, we the meeting with all trustees. All trustees. Our meeting will be here at the church tomorrow. 
Uh, let's push it to 6.30 to give people time to get off work and get where they need to get to. Uh, but looking forward to meeting with the trustees as we continue to plan for FY 2025. Um, and, uh, we ought to make sure that we continue to do things decent and in order. Amen. Where there is no vision, thank you. Amen. The people perish. So we want to make sure that we're planning accordingly. And then the last meeting that we will have will be with the General Church on October 7th here at the church at 7 p.m. And we will go over uh, what we intend to do and what we hope that God does for our church for 2025. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, we are... Uh, rapidly, we are just, we are in it in our um, vote voting time of year. Amen, amen. 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 So I want to uh, express uh, this. However, which way you vote, I want to express that you get out and vote. Amen. amen. I'm gonna say it again. I encourage you. <laughs> I implore you. I, 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 I don't, I'm running out of words to say, but get out of there and vote. Amen. Amen. Because your vote Amen. And if you are not registered to vote, see Sister Waters. She can get you registered so that you can vote. Uh, matter of fact, Sister Waters, we need to get Ryan to you. He'll be, um, he'll be 18, Lord have mercy, Friday. Lord have mercy. And it's been, I know, right? He'll be 18 Friday, and one of the things that we've always done, whenever that child turn of age, we go to the polls together. So we need to make sure we get him taken care of because every vote is going to count. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, we're going to vote uh, for uh, the, the one that uh, is best for us. Uh, with the initials of K and H, but uh, <laughs> Amen. All right, <laughs> but just get out there and vote. All right, um, how's your Bible reading going, y'all? Keeping up? I think we clipped 250 days this past week. Amen. So we almost there, almost there. So keep pushing, keep hanging with us, and we gonna keep climbing higher and learning more about the Word of God. All right, I don't think I have anything else, any other announcements at this time. All right, quiet. Y'all, come on, y'all blessing us. Sounding all good and stuff. I, I almost came <laughs> But I'm going to sit on this front row and wait for y'all to do what y'all do. <laughs> Amen. Y'all come on, bless us. And then after that, we're here with us, says the Lord.
Matthew, sixth chapter, verse nine. Why are you looking? Spirit of worship says, pray, pray. Hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. If you don't mind, allow me to use this for a thought real quick as we pray. As we pray. Amen. 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 Prayer. Prayer. That is the expectation of all of the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ that we will be committed to conversation with our God. That, that is the expectation of the Lord for all of his followers is that we would be a praying people. No, notice when the disciples ask the Lord to teach them to pray, he says, when you pray, it is the same phrase that is repeated over and over again. In, in, in chapter 6, Jesus teaching about prayer and those preparatory verses leading up to this model prayer. He lets all of his disciples know that it is the expectation of the Lord Jesus that each of us would pray. He says it over and over again, when you pray, when you pray, when you pray, that, that this is not optional for the believer. All right, all right. That, that if you want to have a strong relationship with God, it is absolutely necessary that you bathe your relationship in prayer. So, so my brothers and sisters, I submit to you today that this wonderful passage of scripture, not just in chapter 6 of the Gospel of Matthew, but in chapters 5, 6, and 7, for in those three chapters, we are introduced or reintroduced to what is known as the Sermon on the Mount. It is in this sermon, an extensive sermon to be sure, that the Lord provides fundamental information. For the followers who would dare to follow after him, he gives them this information to let them know that there are certain things that he anticipates would be characteristics of his disciples. He lets them know how to bless, uh, how to be blessed in the first few verses of the Sermon on the Mount in chapter 5. And those first verses, he gives to us what is known as the Beatitudes. He helps us to understand how to be blessed as a child of the living God. He talks to us about being the salt of the earth and the light of the world. He talks to us about retaliation. He talks to us about making oaths. He talks to us about sin. Talks to us about being the people of God that we claim to be. In chapters 5, 6, and 7, he gives to us the significant information about what it means to be a follower of the law. And in the middle of the sermon, in the center of the sermon, almost the centerpiece of the entire message, he puts these nine verses on prayer. Nine verses on prayer telling us to be careful not to pray to be seen by people. Be careful not to pray just so people can applaud you. Be careful of using vain repetitions in your prayer. He says be real careful not just to pray so that men and women can see you and celebrate you for your prayers and the words that you utter. He says no. When you pray go into your secret closet. 
pray to God in secret, and the God who hears you in secret will reward you openly. It, 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 it's, it's a beautiful language that the Lord has given to those followers who are out there on the mountainside as he preaches the sermon to them. And as he preaches, he then gets into this model prayer. Yeah. We, we got to learn to use that language, Sister yeah. Waters. This is the model prayer. Yeah, yeah. We, we got to learn to use it. And I, I know we often call it the Lord's prayer, yeah. but, but, but it's really the model prayer. I mean, many have suggested the, that, that over in John chapter 17, that, that's the Lord's prayer. Right. When the Lord prays on the very last night of his life, praying that all of us, but for all of us as one, and he prays and he, he, as he's trying to prepare us, preparing the people of God for his imminent departure. And so we hear there the Lord's prayer. But over here in Matthew chapter 6, we ought to receive this as the model prayer. Because Jesus here teaches us to pray. He says, he says, I want you to kind of package your prayers after this pattern. I want you to be able to look at the words that I give you and then pattern your prayers after these. He says, he says you, you, you don't have to use the same words. Every time. You don't have to use the word same words every time. That, that, that's not the reference of the text. Yeah. He's saying that when you pray, yeah. this is the model yeah. that I want you to use. Yeah. This is the framework yeah. that I want you to use. Because if you do that, you will have a comprehensive prayer life. You'll be able to talk to your God about that of which you need. Yeah. But watch this. You won't just begin with what you need. As a matter of fact, when Jesus gives this model on prayer, I submit that he suggests to us today, church family, that when we pray, divine adoration ought to precede human supplication. Divine adoration ought to precede human supplication. Look at the text again. You remember it. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be. Jesus teaches those brothers and sisters who are his followers out there on the mountainside. He's preaching, preach, preaching to them on prayer. He says to them, be real careful not to just jump into your prayer begging God for everything that you need. Lord, I need you to help me out on this job. Lord, I need you to fix this situation at the house. God, I need some more money. God, I need a boot. God, I need a spouse. God, just bouncing back and forth, asking and begging God for everything. No, Jesus says when you pray, don't just start out asking God for stuff. You need to start out loving on God for a little while. You need to applaud God. You need to approve of who God is and who God is in his character. Yeah. So he yeah. begins by saying, listen, listen, when you pray, yeah. you ought to lift up yeah. the name of God. Right. You ought to celebrate yeah. God. You, you ought to glorify yeah. God. Yeah. Listen, okay, I, I have, um, we, have we, we have six children and a grandson. Y'all see him sitting there. Uh, and, and and, and those six children, they know, they know if they want to get something out of them, especially me, um, they, can't, they can't just come in begging for right. stuff. Right. They do it anyway. They, they just get out. They just start begging. But, but uh, start telling me how much you love your dad. Start, start telling me how, how, how good your daddy is to you. Get me ready for the request that's about to be made. And then when that happens, my brothers and sisters, they'll find out that the answer still no. But, uh, but it helps them sometimes get anything they want. From. Now, now don't let my wife start to butter me up. I, 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 I'm going to have to take a loan from somebody because I'm just going to go broke when she starts doing it because it's different. When she starts to butter me up, but boy, you just you just gonna start. But 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 we ought to we 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 have 
have to understand. He says, before you beg from God for anything, you ought to brag about how wonderful God is. You ought to boast about how magnificent God is. You ought to be able to testify of God's goodness and his grace. Look, look at what he says. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That word hallowed right there means to make holy, to make sacred, to honor it as something special and set apart. You must understand that our Heavenly Father is unlike every other father there is. Our Father is unlike everybody else. There is no one who can compare to him. There is no one who is like him in all the earth. He is the great I am. He is the one who no one is comparable to. He's in a class all by himself. And when you know who God is, you begin to speak to him in loving terms. Lord, I love you. Lord, I bless you. I glorify your name because I recognize there's absolutely nobody who can do what you do like you. Is there anybody in here who knows that your God is so great? Your God is so awesome and so amazing and so magnificent that when you talk to him, listen, you just have to tell him every now and then, Lord, you just blew my mind again. You ought to be able to tell him, Lord, you, every time I turn around, God, you just keep on doing great things for me. You just keep showing yourself to be real and strong and powerful and majestic and amazing. Somebody ought to be able to tell him how great he is. We run around, we sing that song, how great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, holy, 
set apart is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. He literally suggests, this, this, this is his literal suggestion. Jesus says, I want God's reign and rule to be in the earth. God, the, the reign of God, R-E-I-G-N, the reign of God needs to be in the earth. He says, I want to make sure that everything that God wants in our time is what I want in my life. I want to make sure that, that, that I align with the will of God yes, to be in my life. Yes, so that I don't just walk outside and I just walk outside of the step of God for my life. Yes, okay, is there anybody in church today who understands that if we are real honest today, right. if we're honest, we have to testify that our will and God's will ain't always the same. Our will should have been a whole lot more amen right there. Because I said our will and God's will are not always aligned. Sometimes there are some seasons where we want some things for ourselves that are diametrically opposed to what God wants for us. Yeah, right. yeah. And every now and then, we've got to pray that prayer. Yeah. Lord, let your kingdom come into my life. Yeah. Let your will be done in my life. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know what's best for me like you know what's best for me like you know what's best for me. Yeah. So I'm trying to align my will yeah. with your will. Songwriter, songwriter back in the back in the 80s and, and 90s used to sing a song that said, the safest place mm -hmm. yes. in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Right. And is there anybody in here who wants to be in that safe space? Oh, yeah. Anybody in here in the church today yeah. want to be in a place where you and your will aligns with God's will? Listen, okay. Don't be upset when you have to align your will with God's will. When you when, when your will and God's will, when, when those when, when they are disaligned, don't worry about that. Because you're not the only one who had to pray a prayer. Lord, let your will be done in my life. You, you ain't the only one who's had to pray that prayer. Y'all remember that man named Jesus, right? It was on the last night of his life. He goes into the garden of Gethsemane and he begins to pray. He understands that the reason for which he's coming to the world, but by the time the rubber starts to meet the road, he's like, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup from me. Even the Lord had to try to get a line. But he, he didn't close his prayer right there. He know he had to get a line. He said nevertheless, oh I love that word, nevertheless not my will but thy will be done. And there are some, there are some days church family, when you're just going to have to say thy will be done. When, when, when your loved one is passing from labor to reward. Sometimes you got to say, Thy will be done. Sometimes when God lets the door shut, that you was hoping that He would open, but there's another door over there that you don't see that He's opening because all you see is the door right there in front of you. Sometimes you got to say, Lord, Thy will. Be done. Even, even when, when, when the services are no longer needed at your job. And you, you get told we're going in a different direction. And you get enough. Listen, you got to understand that God has something greater that's coming later. Thy will be done. Even if that relationship doesn't work out the way you want it to work out. Thy will be done. 
not my will, but thy will be done. This, this, this is this is this right here, this portion, this you have to be mature in your prayers right here. When, when, when you don't just beg God for everything you want, thinking that you know what's best for you. Sometimes we have to acquiesce to the will of God and say, Lord, listen, you know what's best. Lord, you know how to lead me. Lord, you know where to take me. Lord, I'm going to, listen, not my will. Thy will be done. But watch the text. Watch the text. Jesus teaches to us that when we pray, our divine adoration ought to precede human supplication. But can I push it a little bit further? It seems to me that Jesus likewise helps us to understand that human supplication must concede to divine qualification. Somebody say qualification. Now Jesus says, now listen, when you get ready to make your petition, you get ready to make your request. You've already made your adoration known to God. You say, God, I love you. God, I praise you. Holy is your name. Now you begin to make supplication to God. You begin to make your request to God. He literally says, you can ask whatever you want to ask. Because when you ask, if you ask believing, you already know that it's going to happen. You already know because of who you're talking to. The one you're talking to is qualified to do exactly what you're asking him to do. So, 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 so it makes no sense for us to pray if we don't think God can answer the prayer that we're making of him. It makes no sense to pray if we don't believe that he's qualified to handle the request that we make of him. When we pray, listen, okay, okay. I pray, I pray believing that the God that I'm talking to is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think. So my supplication could see to the fact that God is qualified to do whatever him to do. And so, so here's what Jesus says. When you pray, go ahead. Go ahead and ask him for your daily provisions. Give us this day our daily bread. He says, go ahead and ask him what you need, which is physical. Go ahead and ask for those things which is going to sustain you, that will help you get from point A to point B. He says, whatever you think that you need in this life. Go ahead and ask for it. You don't have to come scared. You don't have to come sheepishly. Go boldly to your God. You don't have to come in Him as if you don't think God is going to answer you. Come boldly to the throne of grace so that you can obtain favor to help you in your time of need. He says, ask for your physical needs. Ask for your sustenance. Ask for that which will help you get over the humps in this thing we call life. And here's what Jesus says. Ask him for your daily bread. I wish I had time to talk about that daily bread for a little bit because it literally suggests that God is going to give us every single day just what we need to make it throughout the day. Okay, bread, bread, bread. Bread, bread what sustained those early folk. Bread was what kept going. You, you remember when those brothers and sisters, those Israelites, they were out in the wilderness when they was wandering for 40 years. The Bible says that God fed them manna from heaven every single day. Every morning they woke up, God gave them fresh bread from heaven. So now he's saying, just as God took care of the ancient Israelites, God is going to take care of you. Every single day you need to ask him for what you need and then know that he's able to supply everything that you need. 
Is, is there a witness in the church who knows that your God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus? If you need a car, ask him for it. If you need a house, ask him for it. If you need your loved ones uh, to have some help in their life, listen, ask him for it. Everything that you need, God will supply. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everything. Your God, yes, our God, loves you so much so that he, watch this, he don't even just give you your needs. Yeah, right, yeah. Bible says he'll give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in him. And, oh, y'all need to hear this. I need to, I, we ought to have some people shout right now, running all over this place, because this, God will give you the desires of your heart. If you delight yourself in him. He said, I'm going to make your cup run over. That, that. Oh, oh my God. Listen, he says, give me this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Then he says, I not only need you to give me, give me some stuff. But in the process of me asking you to give, I likewise need to ask you to forgive. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. He said, I don't need you to just ask me for some stuff. I need you to forgive me for some stuff. All right. All right. We will lose. Don't, don't. Don't get quiet right through here because it's about to get tough. Got to get rough right through here. Uh, 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 because everybody in the church, everybody here, everybody watching online needs the Lord to forgive us for something. That, 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 that we all need. need we, we, listen, we all need the Lord to forgive us for something. Even the something was done recently. Even maybe if it was something that you've done while you sitting right here in the church. Something that you've done while you watch your church online. All of us need God forgiveness for something. Listen, don't let these Bibles sit in the people's laps fool you. Don't let the apps that people got on their phones fool you. Don't let the suit, tie, and those church dresses fool you. All of us needs God's forgiveness for something. So he says, he says, don't close your prayer without asking for forgiveness. But you close your prayer because we've all made mistakes. We wish we had not have made. We've all done some things we wish we had not have done. We've all said some things, thought some things that we should not have said or thought. We've left some things unsaid that we should have said and we've left some stuff undone that we, all of us need to be saying, forgive us our debts. Look at what he says. He equates debt and sin with one another. He said, our sin is a debt that we owe to God. And the only one who can wipe the slate clean and eliminate our debt is the God who's able to forgive us for all of our sins. So he says, when we go to God, we recognize this. We recognize, hey, 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 I, I'm in debt. I, I, I done messed up. More times I ain't even care to talk about it. I don't even want the people on my road to know all the mistakes that I done made since the last time we were sitting next to each other in church. If they knew all my business, they probably asked me to sit on another road. But I need God to forgive the debt. I need him to eliminate the debt. Now, now, now you remember, 
Forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass against us. There came a, 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 in, a, in, a, in, a, in an Anglican book of a prayer between 1300s and 1500s, but, but, but the earlier manuscript says, forgive us our debts. Because they understood that we were in debt to God. And we needed God to eliminate the debt. And he says, I need you to do it. As you forgive other folk yeah. for the debt they have for you. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. let that sink in for a second. Right. Yeah. Let it sink in. I'm almost. He says, the elimination of your debt, yeah. your sin, yeah. the elimination of it can be linked so much so to your eliminating somebody else's. Dead against you. Okay, okay, I know. What, huh? What you talking about, preacher? I'm gonna break down for you. Break down for you. Here it is. That you can't keep holding grudges when you expect God to forgive you. God is expecting you to forgive somebody else. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I said, if you're going to expect God to keep on forgiving you, God is expecting you to keep on forgiving somebody else. I know, if you can't say amen, say ouch. I get it. I understand. Uh, 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 uh. Listen, you get over that grudge. You've been holding it since 1985. Get over that grudge. You've been holding it since 2020. Get over that grudge. You've been holding on since January. Get over that grudge you've been holding on since last week. God says, eliminate the debt. You want God to eliminate your debt, then you got to expect that he's going to expect you to eliminate somebody else's debt. I get it. First part, we was at the gimme. At the gimme, we, we run and shout, give me, Lord, hallelujah. At the responsibility, accountability. A few of us, we still, hey! Some of us, wait a minute, preacher. You don't know what they did and said to me. It don't matter. God knows what you did, but you want them to forgive you. Watch this, watch this. He says, as he gives, we likewise have to expect God to forgive. We, 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 want, we want to forgive, but watch. He also says, lead us not into temptation. I like this. I like this. He says, lead us not into temptation. He says, Lord, I know how I am. So I need you to lead me around some stuff that you know I like. He said, come on, Jesus. You know I like some stuff that you don't want me to like. So I need you to help me stop liking some stuff so much. Because the stuff that I like so much keep calling me in the direction. So I need you to leave me. So I need you to leave me. Can I find some folk in here who might just say, man, Lord, you're talking about me right now. Because I need the Lord to lead me and guide me around some of the traps and pitfalls that this evil one has placed in my life. Lead me not into temptation, but deliver us, there it is, from evil. From me, I like that. I like that. I like that because, because all of us know that there's a whole lot of evil in this world. Don't we? We, 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 we all know that there's a lot of evil in this world. There's bigotry and hatred, violence and poverty. That, that's evil in the world. Racism and, and classism, age, that's evil in the world. But watch the text. But when you read the text, it's not just the evil that's outside of us. It's not just the evil that's without us. He says, I also need you to deliver me. 
from the evil that's within. The literal translation of the text is deliver us from the evil one. Because the evil one would try to embody us and make us express that. Which he, he, he tries to get us to express those things which are unlike the will of God for our lives. And so I need you to deliver me from the evil one because the evil one makes me do some stuff that I know I ain't supposed to be doing. The evil one comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I'm glad that Jesus said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So I need you to understand, I'll deliver you from the evil one. Listen, okay, okay, okay. The evil one, the evil one, the evil one makes me lie. Yeah, all right. The evil one makes me cheat. Oh, yeah, right. The evil one makes me steal. Yeah. The evil one makes me connive. Yeah. The evil one makes me plot against some folk who plot against me. The evil one makes me hate some folk I ain't supposed to be hating. The evil one makes me love some folk I ain't supposed to be loving. Oh, that's a whole other story. The, the, the evil one has done some things that will lead me in ways I'm not supposed to be going. The evil one will have me telling folk that you, you ain't no good when that ain't none of my business. The evil one will have me insecure, doubting myself. The evil one will try to put fear in my life. But Paul says, I can do all things through Christ strengthens me. The evil one to make me think I can't handle this next week of my life. The evil one to make me think that I'll never be able to survive. I'll never overcome. I'll never finish school. I'll never get the promotion. I, the evil one makes me think that I can't have and I can't do what? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And the one I'm talking about right there is that man named Jesus. The Holy Ghost is with me. Yeah. He'll equip you. He'll enable you to get you past all of those humps. Yeah. It says, deliver us from evil. Yeah. Make your request made known to him. Yeah. Ask God for anything that you need. Make your request known. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that we can come to God and make every request made known unto him. We can make our requests made known in the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep our hearts and minds stayed on him. Here he is. He, he says, listen, when you adore God, after you adore him, ask him for what you need. Yes, sir. But before you close that prayer, don't you just make your request made known to Jesus? No, no. He said, before you shut it down, yeah. before you end your prayer, you ought to start all over again. All right. Praise in the Lord yeah. for what you've already done in the beginning. Yeah. He says, if you know that God is qualified oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. to meet all of your needs, yeah. Oh, yeah. if you know that God is qualified to lead you because he's your shepherd, yeah. if you know that he's qualified to give you your daily bread yeah. because he's a provider, if you know that he's qualified to forgive you, because that's just how he rose. If you know that he's qualified to deliver you, because he's a deliverer, then you ought to make sure that God's qualification ought to breed even more adoration. That the divine ought to make you start to praise him a little bit more. But as we get ready to get out of here, he says the final part. For thine is the king, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Did you catch it? He begins to laud God all over again. He begins to celebrate God all over again. He doesn't just shut down the prayer. He literally says, since. I know what you're able to do. He says, I'm going to go ahead and celebrate you before you even get it done. Because I know that
that you're able to do just what I'm asking you to do. So it says before you close down your prayer, you just go ahead and start celebrating God all over again because he is qualified to give you everything that you're asking for. So go ahead and celebrate him. When you get ready to close out your prayer, he says, for thine is the king. He says, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm glad that this reminder that he puts right here. He says, you don't have to wait to get you can go ahead and shout right now because your blessing is on the way. The old saints say, don't wait till the battle is over. Go ahead and shout right now. So I need to talk to somebody in here who's been praying the same thing for a long time. I need to talk to somebody who's got a prayer request before God right now. I need you before the service is over not to be consumed and concerned with whether or not if God is going to answer it. You ought to believe in your heart that God that you're praying to is able to move in your direction. And since you know that he's able to move in your direction. I want to take about 30 seconds and I want you to start to praise the Lord right now. Think about your prayer that you've been lifting up. Have you praised God in advance for it? If you haven't praised him in advance for it, I want to give you a few seconds to uplift the name of the Lord. For kind is the king. The glory forever and ever, amen. For thine is the kingdom, this kingdom belongs to him. Everything that you need belongs to him. So while you're praying, calling on the name of the Lord, you ought to close it out because you already know that he can fix it. You're closing it out saying, for thine is the kingdom. All you're saying is, I trust you that you're going to make a way somehow. For thine is the kingdom. Everything already belongs to you. For thine is the kingdom. Here's the good part. And the power. Power to heal the sick. Power to restore your Power to give you everything that you need. The thine is the kingdom. The power, and here it is, the glory. You are glorified. You are lifted up. You are celebrated. Because I know my help is on the way. this time. That ain't the last blessing you have for me. Over and over again. We heard them say every time I turn around he keeps on blessing me. There goes a blessing. 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 A blessing. There goes a blessing forever and ever. Amen. As we pray, understand.
understand the model that he gives us. And if you adhere to the model that he gives us, this model that he gives us, you open up in prayer. That'll already change your mindset. Don't just start that, Lord, give me, give me, give me. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. That I have the ability to come and talk to you in the first place. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Even though it's bad right now, it's not as bad as it could be. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. you are, it'll get you into a spirit of praise and worship. And then you can start asking, Lord, this is what I need. Help me out. Look at the model. You, 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 after you praise him, you're excited already because I can ask him for these things and he's going to give it to me. But why did he give it? Lord, clean me up. Wash me white as snow. Make me better. But not just me. Help me release some stuff that I've been holding on to for way too long. And then once it's over, you ought to go back into a spirit of praise and worship because you already know I just turned it over to the only one who can work it as we pray. Pray. Believing and trusting that God can do anything but fail. Develop that relationship with him that says, I love God so much so that when I look back over my life and I think about all of the things that the Lord has already get excited about that and because of what he's already done for me my faith is already high to a point of me saying if God did it before he's able to do it again I don't know about you but when you are praying in this model. Mm -hmm. There's a great possibility you probably won't even make it through the prayer. Because the Holy Spirit is going to take over. You may not have the words to say. But if you model this prayer, God sees what you're doing. He's saying, oh, I hear you, child. Thank you for lifting me up. Thank you for giving me the adoration that's due. What is, what, what is it that you need? Oh, that's, what, that's, that's all you need? Don't worry about it. I got it right here in the palm of my hand. I got it right here in the utterance of my voice. All I got to do is speak it. And it will happen. Thank you, God. Thank you for forgive me. Child, don't worry about it. I don't wipe your slate clean. Yes, sir. But understand when I wipe your slate clean, I need you to wipe somebody else's slate clean. And then after that, we can praise and shout all together for the God that we serve is able, willing. Bless you beyond measure. The door is open. There may be somebody right now. Who may now realize and understand the power of prayer. Y'all hear me say it all the time that I believe in the power of prayer. It's not a cliche. I ain't saying it just to be saying it. I'm saying it because I understand who God is. 
in my personal life and in me sitting back and watching y'all's lives. I get excited about what God can, is, and has done. So when I say let's pray, it's not because it sounds good. When you ask me, Pastor, can you pray for me? Yeah. And if I respond to you, yes. I'm not just saying yes to be getting you out of the face. I'm not just saying yes just to be answering. I'm saying yes with a compassion in my heart because I understand just what God can do. So I stand in agreement with you. Like, hey, listen, you want to pray? I'm lifting it up. Yes. Praising him. Asking him. Asking him to forgive. Forgiving those who I need to forgive. Then going back to praise all over again. Because I know what God can do. So we extend this privilege to you for prayer. We extend it for candidate for baptism. We extend it to unite with the church. We extend it for rededication. We want to give you an opportunity to understand that the God that we serve is available to each and every one of you. He's available. We always say that he's available to you. Maybe you may be in a good place right now. Maybe God has been blessing you and you in a good spot right now. But do you not realize that just as God is available to you, he's also available through you. Sometimes what you gain from God ought to be you ought to be used as a vessel to go and share it with somebody else. You never know whose life you may touch. You never know who, who you may help get over that hump that they've been trying to get through. So he's available to you and also through you. you poured into us. Thank you, God, for the reminder of how we should pray. And when we pray, the model that's laid out. Father, give us an understanding of knowing just who you are. That we can call on you at any given point and time because God, first and foremost, you dictated to us that we ought to have a conversation with you. We ought to talk to you. We ought to adore you. Even when we're not asking for nothing, God, we ought to still be able to pull on the line and say, God, I just want to say thank you. For it is well with my soul. But God, there's, a, there, there's somebody right now who needs you in such a mighty way, who may be lying on their bed of affliction, who may be in a place of confusion, who may not know which direction to turn. God, wherever they are, be there. Let your hand be busy in their hearts, their minds, their lives. Walk with each and every one of us right now, God. That we may know and understand that we have a God who's on our side. Who will never leave us nor will he forsake us. Thank you God for being God all by yourself. 
Forgive us for we have sinned against you. But God, give us the mindset to forgive others who have sinned against us. And have I an old way? In Jesus' name, amen. The privilege has been extended to us to accept or to decline. Amen, amen, amen. As we pray, amen. Listen, as we get ready to prepare for our offering, amen. Uh, if you need to be serviced by an usher, please raise your hand and they'll make sure you have that that you need. God is in control. God is in control. If you're watching online or sitting, please, and you're looking for ways to electronically give, please go to our website at www.gebdallas.org. There you will see the Ways to Give tab, and you can follow that prompt get you where you need to be. Amen. Sowing seed into good ground. Amen. Has never came back forward. Amen. the high will be standing to receive all of our tithe and our offering. This black box, if you want to be a blessing to the preacher, you can drop it in there. First and foremost, always your tithe and your offering.
givers. Let this offering be used for that which is given, which is kingdom building. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, thank y'all so much for being in service on today. We pray that something was said that you can take it and apply it to your everyday living. Most importantly, that your prayer life has been strengthened on today. Amen. 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 All right. I don't believe we have anything else. We got enough time to get a, a good majority of the game in. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry to all those non-cowboy fans that are out there, Steelers. But that's all right. God is in control. <laughs> We gonna pray. This we just said forgive those. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Like a good friendly competition. All right. If all hearts are satisfied, we do. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, hold on. Let me. I'm excited. Let me, let me make sure I get this right. All right. Uh, this evening, this evening, our own Reverend Daryl McNeely uh, Evans will be preaching at uh, this evening at 6 p.m. Uh, he did, what's the name? He didn't New Covenant. Me. New Covenant. Uh, church. It is located in DeSoto, Texas, 411 Northampton Road in DeSoto uh, at 6 p.m. So uh, I'll be going over to support him and being there with him. But keep him lifted in your thoughts and your prayers. Amen? Amen. And I'm glad that God is using him the way that he is and looking forward to where God is going to take him. So keep him lifted uh, this afternoon. All right. Let's all stand. Come on, I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done for me. Blessings and glory. from this place, but never from your presence. There was travel and grace, nor hurt all the days will come upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.